On March 20th of 2015, a crazed man ran through an airport in New Orleans with a machete and threatened TSA agents and citizens in the airport. His rampage include wa included waving a large knife at agents and civilians and spraying wasp spray on people that he passed by. His rampage was cut short by an off-duty sheriff who shot him in the, sh in the thigh and stopped his attacks. He was also said to have been carrying several homemade explosives on his person. He later died in the hospital of his injuries after refusing any medical treatment on account of his beliefs. This is not the first occurrence of a man charging TSA agents or even people at the airport, but it could be one of the last few. If we only allowed for the agents to be prepared for these attacks, we cannot expect these attacks to end, but we can take preventative measures to help stop injuries from occurring. Attacks like this could be prevented. TSA agents have the task of keeping passengers and their families safe in airplanes and in the airport. We should allow these agents the tools that would make their jobs easier and would help keep them safer. TSA agents need to carry guns. The Los Angeles Times put out an article after a shooting in LAX that asked citizens if they believed that TSA agents should be armed. Most said no. This is most probably because this particular airport has its own police agency that patrols the airport to protect civilians. But what about airports that do not boast this expensive privilege? Like New Orleans, where the man with the machete ran through. What about the airports that only have a few TSA agents and no police officers? Taking precautions to protect citizens should not be up for debate. The purpose of a Transportation Security Administration Officer, or a TSA officer, is to prevent any type of weapons or possible threats to the safety of the passengers onto the plane, which makes their jobs incredibly essential to, for the protection of flyers, and yet we expect them to do their job of deterring weapons without them. Naturally, uh, flyers have mixed feelings about arming the people who go through their baggage, saying that an armed security guard but that with armed security guards, there's no reason to arm the agents as well, but it would be more beneficial to be safe instead of sorry in the long run. The KATU-2, a news station in Oregon, posted, an on, posted on the arming of TSA agents after the shooting in 2015, saying that some citizens would be uncomfortable if they knew the agents were armed. AskThePilot.com says that citizens who are frequent flyers must understand that TSA screeners are not police officers and have no authority as such. The man who writes these blogs is adamantly against arming TSA agents, but his thoughts here have only persuaded my own opinion further. He says, deputizing and training even a limited number of these employees to carry and use deadly weapons is granting the agency a power it neither has ne nor earned and re or is required to fulfill its mission. I believe in this statement he's missing the point of the idea. The idea is not to give more power to the agents, but rather to protect the agents and those that they are serving. The agents do not work to protect themselves. They work to protect the people, the passengers. To leave them unarmed and trying to do this job is a gross happening. Another argument against arming the TSA agents is that the cost will not outweigh the outcome. Although it is rare that an airport is shot up and the people are injured or killed over it, there is no price that we can put on a life that would satisfy the family or the friends of the family of the person who was killed. Therefore, the cost should be of no concern. Those who complain about the issue of cost often think that the cost that paying to arm these TSA agents would go to the taxpayer. But that's not the only place that rates could go up. There are some people who have never flown on a plane, do not intend to, thus making the taxation unlawful. But if airfare was upcharged, the people flying would pay for their own safety. But not all communications, or not all communities, are against the idea of arming the agents. California has taken some concrete steps toward the protection of their airports. Infowars.com says that the Transportation Security Administration's plan to hire the use of a firing range within a 20-mile radius of LaGuardia Airport in order to train TSA workers. The intention is to arm the agents during their shifts at airports. The article also claims that a government security news report confirmed that the firing range will be used by the TSA to train its employees and DHS personnel. Federal air marshals acting under the jurisdiction of the TSA are currently armed, but the scope of the firearms range the TSA is seeking to acquire clearly suggests that it will be on much more widespread basis than simply for training air marshals. TSA agents should be armed. The fact that we have been through so many terrorist attacks and crazed citizen rampages and still have not armed the people who can help is a disappointment. 
The benefits of arming agents, such as greater protection against the threats to citizens and the airplanes, far outweigh the cons of the project, such as the cost and the level of comfort that most people would feel seeing an agent with a firearm on their belt. For our own protection and the protection of those we care about, the government should arm TSA agents.